Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of Is It Worth It? My name is Chris Newman. I am an avid video game collector and I love playing games, let's just face that. Uh, but recently there's been a lot of eBay and resellers out there that are making it a little hard for gamers like you and me to collect these games that we like. So I decided to do a review show to help you understand and see if the game is actually worth the high price point that some people are asking for. Uh, but what better way to start off this game than the first game that I actually took a chance on. Uh, so that's going to be Bucky O'Hare. That's it. Bucky O'Hare for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, this game came out in January of 1992 for the NES, which is a great game uh, system if you didn't have one. Go buy now. Right now. Like, pause, pause the video, and go buy an NES. Buy a bunch of games, just not wrestling games, but go buy games now. Because you're going to need them, you're going to want them, and they're going to be fun. But first off, when I do reviews or uh, when I actually see a game that I don't know a lot about, uh, first thing I look for is the label the actual game cartridge label. Now, this game is very good. Uh, cartridge label is very nice. Uh, there's a lot going on right here. You actually get to see Captain Bucky. You get to see his crew. You get to see the giant toads behind them, uh, which is actually really, really cool for a game label. The only thing that I don't like about this game label, the only thing I don't like, is right up here. This dead space, right here. I don't like that. It feels like it was wasted space. Minor complaints, my end, I just like to complain about it. So the next thing I'm gonna go over is the overall gameplay. Game mechanics, stuff like that, just to help you get a better feel for the actual game. Uh, so the first thing I wanna talk about is really cool because you actually get to have level pick. Uh, there's really cool because this is kind of like a Mega Man throwback. Uh, there's four levels to choose from right off the bat. There's the green planet, the red planet, the blue planet, and the yellow planet. Real original. No, what's cool about this is your freedom to pick. Uh, your crew is actually captured right off in the beginning of the game, and it's up to Captain Bucky to go and rescue them. Uh, but the problem is, each level of the four levels has a different boss fight and a different crew member on, so you can't get your characters right off the bat. So what you will need to do is pick one of the four levels, go through it, and then you can actually beat the boss and get your character. Uh, the green level holds Blinky, which is pretty cool because he can actually shoot at a sloped arc and has the ability to break ice blocks, which is helpful for the ice level. And his special ability is the floating mechanic, so he can actually float. The red planet is kind of cool. Uh, it's a lava level, so it's really, really cool. Uh, but after you beat through the boss on this, you actually unlock Dead Eye Duck, which has the shotgun which spread shots, so you get a bottom, middle, uh, top arc. And his special ability is he can climb on walls. So that comes in handy when you gotta go through those tight situations. The ice level, the blue level, uh, is kinda cool. Uh, when you beat that level, you unlock Jenny, who can shoot mine beams. Uh, and her special ability is when you hold down the button, is the uh, telekinesis, or that's what I call it. Uh, which is kind of cool because you can actually control it and charge it up and move it around, which is cool. And the final level is the yellow level. Uh, after you defeat that boss in there, you unlock the character Wily, uh, which is cool because he's a little human guy. His special ability is the laser, so just a regular shooting laser, but if you hold it down, it gets powerful, so that's kind of cool. That's cool. So what's really cool about this game, uh, the controls handle very, very tightly. Uh, so if you move left and right, up and uh, aim up or down, it handles very responsibly. Uh, jumping is jumping. Tap it. Uh, the softer the tap you do, the less of a jump you'll do. Harder you do, the more altitude, which is kind of cool. Um, what's really cool about this game is the bottom of your game actually has a power meter. Uh, what's kind of cool about this that not a lot of games is, is this game allows you to upgrade your power level. Uh, you can do this, and you can upgrade your health by finding these uh, tokens. The P is for power, the L is for life. So you can upgrade your power bar all the way to the maximum for each character. 
which is really cool because that means you can do more special abilities by holding down the fire button, which is the B button. The downside to this is, is if your character dies and you have to go to the continue screen, you actually lose your health. We'll go back to the halfway point and you'll have to collect the health tokens all over again. The plus side to this is the power up meter actually stays the same. So no matter how long you or how often you die, which happened a lot for me, the power meter never goes down until you actually fit, quit the game, which is kind of helpful for that aspect for me because then I don't have to worry about collecting all those tokens all over again. So, cool. Another thing this game does really cool is the fact that you can select your characters on the fly by hitting the select button. You just tap it once, you switch to a character. You can select to hit the select button again, switch to another character. The downside to this is you have to hit the select button. So the more you need to ask a certain character to get across that certain spot, I kept on hitting the select button and actually going past it because I forgot the order. So that's a minor inconvenience, but it's not terrible. It's manageable. It's manageable if you know your game. So cool. Another thing that's really interesting about this game, it does have a very steep difficulty curve. After the first four levels, it's not terrible, but it's kind of an annoyance at certain parts, especially this one. Yeah, not a lot there. But once you actually beat all four levels, you get all your characters back, you have to go into the Toad ship. And that is where I spent most of this gameplay for me. Uh, it did take me uh, quite a bit of time to actually go navigate through this, so it's fun, but it does get hard very fast, so be warned. One little downside I had about this game. Uh, I spent all this time collecting, doing all this stuff, unlocking all four of the crew members, which was really hard and fun at the same time. The second I get everyone collected, nope, I lose them all over again. The second you get into level five, which is after you beat the final fourth planet, is you get to actually fight the Toad army. But the downside is you lose all your characters again. You start off as Bucky and Blinky, and you have to break out of jail, and you have to go collect all your friends again. <sighs> really? Uh, why this is annoyance is because I had just beaten the Yellow Planet, I get Wily, I'm excited to use him, never got him before, and I don't get to use him. I actually have to go through and beat the whole Toad section, the first whole Toad section, to actually get the characters unlocked again. That's kind of an annoyance, but they do something cool that I actually haven't seen before in most games, is to actually get your crew back, you actually have to fight them, but they're brainwashed. But it's kind of cool because you actually know the characters, so you know what their advantages are and what their disadvantages are. So the fights are kind of semi-one-sided, but a few of them can go bad very fast, so be warned. Next thing I want to talk about is the replayability factor on this. Uh, the replayability factor is kind of lacking in this game. Uh, the only thing you can really do is change the four planet order that you usually go for. Uh, for me, I really only had a few things to do differently. I changed up uh, going to the yellow planet first to get Wily, and then going it in reverse order. Now, that's cool in a way, but there really isn't any replayability factor after the fourth level is done. You still have to go through the toad area, you still have to go through that sections, so, eh. Uh, the next topic I want to go over is the hidden gem quality in this game. Uh, what's really cool about this, the hidden gem quality, this is kind of what I throw in every one of my reviews is why this game is probably going for so much, is the fact that it is actually a very fun platformer. I actually spent a lot of time going through this, and I enjoyed every minute I played. Uh, the game actually took me about three hours on the money to actually beat. So, it took me three hours, I'm enjoying it. Even after I beat the game, I actually wanted to hit reset and actually start the game all over again. I find a very good game, and actually the games I actually want to collect in my collection are the games that actually make you beat the game and actually want to replay them all over again after you just beat them. Those are the types of games I think are outstanding and worth having in your collection, and this game does that. In closing, guys, uh, this game, Bucky O'Hare, is an absolute phenomenal platformer. It does have great balance throughout the entire game. I think the best parts about this game are in when you are doing the Toad levels. You actually have to use all, f 
five team members of your crew to get through certain parts. The going price of this during this recording is around $45. So the actual question is, is this game worth it? No. This game is not worth $45. This game would be around the 30 or under category in my personal collection. Uh, I actually got mine for $15, which is an outstanding price for this game. I think it fits it very well. If you can find this game for $30 or under, I highly recommend you picking it up right away because it is worth every penny. $45 is actually just a little push for, I think, overpriced. I really don't recommend you going for $45 due to the fact that there is really no replayability factor and the characters, sometimes I only used one character to go through most of the game, which was Bucky and Blinky. Uh, Jenny had some good moments, and I didn't get Wily till the very end, so I didn't get to use him at all. Uh, Deadeye, I actually only used for his certain parts of the wall climbs. That's it. His weapon is weak, and he doesn't have good aim. If you think I'm wrong about this, and you would like to say, Oh, $45, that's a good steal. You should buy it for $45. Leave it in the comments below, guys. I would totally and totally up for conversations about this. Uh, then remember, this is my personal opinion. So if you want to pay $45, go right ahead. But in my collection, I would not spend $45 on this game. 30 or under, that's my limit. So that's it, guys. Uh, this was a really fun first episode. I'm very glad you guys stopped by and checked this out. If you guys want to see a game for me to review, uh, leave it in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Please remember to hit the like, comment, and subscribe button. I really do appreciate it, and until the next episode, I'll see you guys then.